Hit it. Hit it. Hey everybody and welcome to the Marley Bird channel. In this video we're going to learn how to do the linen stitch. The linen stitch is a fantastic crochet stitch to learn because it gives this really fantastic fantastic subtle texture um, and at the same time it's super simple if you can do a single crochet and a chain one you can accomplish the linen stitch if you couple the linen stitch with a solid yarn um, you get a completely different look than you would if you coupled it with a variegated yarn or even a long color changing yarn now when I talk about long color changing yarn it is different than a variegated because Variegated changes colors sporadically throughout an entire um, skein of yarn. If you're talking about long color changes, there will be long yardage amounts of fiber that are dyed one color and then it will gradually morph into the next color. So what gives it gives you the illusion as you're crocheting that you've changed colors periodically to create um, a really great colored look but you haven't done that. The yarn has done all the work for you. Uh, in today's lesson we're going to use Boutique Treasures yarn, and if you look at the Boutique Treasures, let me flip it around here so you guys can see, you can see that there are long color changes of yarn going on here. And so in our cowl that I'm going to show you here in just a second, you can see those long color changes morph into looking like there's uh, really delicately faded colors? I mean, how else do you describe that? <laughs> it, it morphs, the color morphs into each other and so it looks really phenomenal and it's still, it's just the yarn. The yarn has done all the work for you. So if you couple a long color changing yarn with the linen stitch, you get this really cool texture, great color, and it's just, it's like the perfect combination. So in this lesson we're going to show you how to do the linen stitch and it'll be perfect for you to create this fantastically easy cowl pattern. Here we go. Alright, so to begin the linen stitch we need to start off with an even number, meaning we need to chain an even number of chains. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm putting a slip knot onto my hook. If you need a refresher on how to do the slip knot and the chain stitch, I have a whole video including both of those right here on this channel. So I have my slip knot and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain 12. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I'm going to do that 12 times. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now I have my 12 chains here and the instructions are going to say to put a single crochet in the second chain from hook, meaning you do not want to put a single crochet into the first chain from hook but into the second and you never count the loop that's on your hook. Never, ever, ever, ever. So I'm going to go into the second chain from hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So I've just completed my single crochet. I'm going to grab a marker right here and I'm going to put the marker into that nice V section of the single crochet that I just completed. What that's going to do is it's going to tell me as I come back on the next row that that is my last stitch I want to work into. We are not going to count that very first chain that we skipped as a stitch. So I have single crocheted, I'm going to chain one, I'm going to skip a chain, and I'm going to single crochet in the next chain. So the instructions would read, single crochet in the second chain from hook, chain one, skip a, a chain, single crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in the next chain. And you'll do this all the way down your row for however many stitches you've uh, chained out. So whatever your even number is, as long as you have an even number, this will work out. And you should finish off with being able to do a chain one, skip a chain, single crochet in your last chain. If you've done your, your even uh, count correctly, that's how you should finish, okay? So I'm going to chain one so that I get the right height for the next row, and I've turned. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put my single crochet into my very last single crochet I completed because my chain one is not going to count as a stitch now and forever for this particular pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my needle or my hook right into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Now because that chain one does not count as a stitch, that means that this single crochet I just completed is the last stitch of my next row. So I'm going to take my new marker. I'm going to put it into the, the V part of the stitch I just completed and let it hang there. 
So here's the first thing that I want to point out about doing the linen stitch. On the previous row, we began with the single crochet, chain one, and we ended with the chain one, single crochet. On this row, we're starting off with the single crochet, and we automatically come up to this chain one space from the previous row. We, without doing a chain one, okay, so we have our single crochet, we're gonna put a single crochet right here into this chain one space from the previous row. So I have a single crochet right there. This is going to put two single crochets side by side, which is what we want. Every time we're on this particular row, we will begin with two single crochets side by side and end with two single crochets side by side without a chain one between, okay? So we have that and now we jump into our pattern again. Chain one, we're gonna skip the single crochet and we're gonna single crochet into the chain one space next to it. Now how do you know if you work into a chain one space or a chain one stitch? A pattern should tell you um, if you should work into the chain or the stitch, but most of all, it's kind of your prerogative whether you want it to be into the chain one space or the chain one stitch. By going into the space, you'll see here, let me do this, that we have, I mean, there's no stitch or anything hanging out right there at the bottom of my stitch, okay? But if I take this one out that I just completed, if I tried to go into the chain one itself, see it's even tricky because I'm not used to doing it, and I completed a single crochet, you can see I kind of get that loop down there underneath the stitch that I just completed. And I like to call that the butt of the stitch. I feel like there's the top legs, um, which are the front loop and the back loop, and then you have this bottom loop that I call the butt. I don't like my butt hanging out, so I prefer to go into the space more often than going into the actual stitch when I'm dealing with chains. So I'm gonna go into the chain one space, complete my single crochet, chain one, come skip a single, go into the chain one space. Now, right here, I have my single crochet right here to, to work into. I don't have a single crochet to skip, okay? So that's my second clue that I am not gonna do a chain one and then a single crochet, because I need to keep the same stitch count. So I'm just going to finish with a single crochet right here. So my first clue was that I began with two single crochets side by side. My second clue is that I don't have a single crochet from the row below to skip to complete the, the full row like I did under here. I'll explain that again here in just a second. But here's a third clue. If you notice my markers, I have different color markers, okay? The blue, to me, is going to symbol that that row, whenever I see the blue marker, is going to be the row that I begin with a single and a chain one. When I work with the yellow or the orange marker, that's gonna be my clue that I'm going to begin with two single crochets side by side. Make sense? I really like visual clues or cues, so I use the colors to really help me out. Here, let's put this into action. I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna turn, go ahead and put my single crochet right here. I'm gonna move my marker up, so let me unclip my marker. I'm gonna put it into the single crochet I just completed. Okay, now I'm looking at my blue marker so I know, oh, I have a single crochet chain one for this row. So I can chain one, I'm gonna skip this single crochet, and I'm gonna go into the chain one space. See how that works? It's so convenient and easy. I have, a, I chained one, a single crochet, chain one, skip my single, go into the chain one space. Chain one, skip my single, go into the chain one space. Chain one, skip my single, go into the chain one space. Chain one, skip my single, go into the, go skip my single, go into the chain one space. No, that's not correct. Uh, even I get messed up sometimes. Chain one, skip my single, finish off with a single crochet in the last single crochet. See? See, even I get messed up every now and again, but the visual things help me out because I knew there that there wasn't a chain one space. I was trying to make one, but I was like, no, there isn't one there. So if I were to chain one and go to the next row, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my single crochet because I'm always starting with a single crochet no matter which row I'm on. I begin with a single crochet. I'm moving my orange marker up. My orange marker to me signifies that I'm gonna have two single crochets side by side. So I have a single, my next one's going to be a single into the chain one space. 
chain one, so on and so forth. Now, here's a little tip I wanna caution you guys about, is it's really easy to accidentally, as you're going along, to tighten up that chain one, and, and all of a sudden you'll have a fabric that starts to look a little bit more trapezoid than square. Um, so make sure that when you're doing your chain one, you are not pulling it extra tight, because we have a tendency to do that. You wanna make sure that the, the stitch itself, your loop is the same size as the barrel or the throat, um, or, um, uh, or not, not, so it's not the throat, it's the shaft of your hook. So just make sure as you're going along, you're not tightening up that chain one and your, uh, your uh, linen stitch will come out nice and square. I'm moving up my marker, so now I know I'm at the single crochet chain one, skip a single, go into the chain one space. So you guys can see that now, right? I'm gonna set this down and show you. What's cool about the linen stitch, as you can see here, by working to this chain one space, we get this really cool V looking thing going on, and that's where the stitches have dropped down. So we have all these rows where the V's are offset, kind of like a checkerboard. So you can kind of get this nice V effect going this way or this way or however that works. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna pull in this really cool cowl that I did up. And again, I used a long color changing yarn. And if I flip this around like this, this is the way you are viewing the swatch that I just completed. So you can see here, let me grab my hook so I can point things out. We have these V's that I was showing you before and they're worked catty corner. And that's because I used my markers and I made sure um, that I was on you know, either the row that started off with two singles or the row that started off with the single and the chain one. That's it guys, it's two rows. Either you start off with two singles, chain one, single, chain one, single, end with two singles, or you start off with the single chain one and end with the chain one single. If you use markers and you keep track of everything as you go along, you will have no problem whatsoever, I promise you. This pattern for this beautiful cowl can be um, yours. All you have to do is go to marleybird.com and check out the patterns and you'll find the pattern for this cowl right there. Okay, now you know how to do the linen stitch. It's the perfect technique to add to your crochet toolbox. I hope you will check out the other videos I have right here on this channel, Marley Bird, and hit subscribe so that way you are up to date whenever there's a new video available. Go check out my patterns and uh, I'll meet you back here next time. Thanks guys.